Picture this, it's a balmy summer evening in 1978. You're sitting in a dimly lit theater, the anticipation hanging heavy in the air. The screen flickers to life, and the haunting notes of the soundtrack send shivers down your spine. You are about to embark on a cinematic journey like no other, your first encounter with the enigmatic world of the 1978 movie, Coma. As the opening scenes unfold, you find yourself drawn into a web of suspense, intrigue, and medical malfeasance. The plot twists and turns, leaving you breathless and on the edge of your seat. You can't help but be captivated by Michael Douglas and Genevieve Bujold as they navigate the sinister secrets of a hospital where patients mysteriously slip into comas. But it's not just the gripping storyline that stays with you. It's those memorable moments chilling silence of the operating room, the eerie hum of life support machines, and the relentless pursuit of truth that etch themselves into your memory, making coma a film you'll never forget. Now, let's dive into some random facts about this cinematic gem. Did you know that Coma was adapted from the best-selling novel by Robin Cook? Or that it was directed by the legendary Michael Crichton, known for his groundbreaking work in science fiction? These are just a few intriguing tidbits that add depth to the tapestry of this unforgettable movie. So, whether you're revisiting the world of Coma or discovering it for the first time, prepare to be spellbound by its suspenseful narrative and remarkable storytelling. In the 1978 movie Coma, Richard Widmark marked his 30th anniversary as a movie actor. Widmark, a seasoned actor, brought his experience to the film, adding depth to his character. This milestone was highlighted in the movie's publicity to celebrate his long and successful career. The character of Dr. Moreland, a psychiatrist in the film, unintentionally reveals sensitive information about Dr. Wheeler, including her romantic involvement with Dr. Bellows. This breach of doctor-patient confidentiality emphasizes the unsettling atmosphere at the hospital. It underscores the theme that something is amiss in the medical institution, contributing to the movie's suspense and intrigue. Farrah Fawcett, known for her role in Charlie's Angels, missed out on the role of Dr. Susan Wheeler in Coma. Her commitment to the popular TV series prevented her from taking on the part. This casting decision had a significant impact on the film's lineup, ultimately leading to the selection of a different actress for the role. These behind-the-scenes details offer a glimpse into the making of the 1978 movie Coma and shed light on some of the notable aspects of the film. Richard Widmark's milestone, the breach of confidentiality, and Farrah Fawcett's missed opportunity all played a role in shaping the movie's production and its place in cinematic history. In the 1978 movie Coma, directed by Michael Crichton, several interesting facts stand out. First, Julie Christie was the initial choice to portray Dr. Susan Wheeler, the film's protagonist. However, she turned down the role, and it eventually went to Genevieve Bujold, who delivered a compelling performance. Second, Coma marked Ed Harris' feature film debut. Harris, who later became a renowned actor in Hollywood, made his first big screen appearance in this medical thriller, playing the character of Dr. George. Lastly, an unusual aspect of the film is its lack of a music score until the 45-minute mark. This deliberate choice by the filmmakers adds to the suspense and eerie atmosphere of the movie, allowing viewers to focus on the unfolding mystery without the distraction of music. These intriguing facts offer a glimpse into the making of Coma and its unique qualities that set it apart from other films of its time. In 1978, the movie Coma took audiences into the eerie depths of hospitals, much like Jaws had done for the ocean and sharks in 1975. The film's producer, Martin Ehrlichman, stumbled upon the source novel in galley form and saw an opportunity to tap into people's primal fear of hospitals. He explained, people have a primal fear of the ocean, and Jaws titillated that phobia. In a similar manner, coma accents one's primal fears of hospitals. This is an even stronger phobia because a person can always refrain from going into the water, but cannot always avoid the necessity of going into the hospital. One notable cameo in the film is that of actor Tom Selleck, who played the role of Sean Murphy, a surgery patient seen later in the Jefferson Institute. Interestingly, Selleck would later collaborate with the film's director, Michael Crichton, on the movie Runaway in 1984. Director Michael Crichton, in an interview with Millimeter Magazine, shed light on the film's approach to fear and reality. 
He remarked, this is a story that contains many elements of reality. The fear people have of surgery, the fear of dying at the hands of your doctor, phobias about hospitals. Those are very real fears, and so to exaggerate them would not be much fun. My idea was to put the picture together in such a way that the fears are put in a safe perspective and can be enjoyed as scares without awakening deeper and more real anxieties. Coma was a movie that dived into the unsettling fears associated with hospitals, and it remains a testament to the art of creating suspenseful cinema that strikes a chord with its audience. In the 1978 movie Coma, directed by Michael Crichton, there's an intriguing behind-the-scenes fact that sheds light on the challenges faced by background artists. In the film, these artists portrayed coma patients suspended by wires in the coma clinic. This setup put significant physical strain on them to the extent that they could only be filmed for six-minute bursts at a time. As a result of these demanding conditions, the extras were compensated extra for their efforts. Director Michael Crichton explained the complexity of this technical feat, stating, it was technically very complicated because the people could only hang for six minutes. You see, the suspension was actually only from the hips and neck. But because you had to act like you were suspended by wires everywhere, a great strain was put on the back. To accommodate this challenge, special tables were constructed that functioned like car jacks. Between shots, the actors would sit on these tables for relief. Then, they would be hung and the tables would be rolled away, allowing filming to resume. Remarkably, most of what the camera captured involved real people, with a total of 16 individuals and 15 dummies used in these scenes. This unique filming process showcased the dedication of the background artists, who helped create the eerie atmosphere of the coma clinic. Their willingness to endure physical strain for the sake of the film's authenticity is a testament to the commitment that goes into making a memorable movie. In addition to this intriguing tidbit, Coma also underwent significant changes when transitioning from the source novel to the screen. The central character, Dr. Susan Wheeler, shifted from a feminist blonde medical student in the book to a brunette second-year surgical resident in the film. The feminist content of the novel was also toned down, except for some arguments between the main couple. Furthermore, the movie relocated the medical institute building from the city to an outer suburb. Lastly, it's worth noting that two versions of the coma clinic scenes were filmed on with the patients semi-naked, and the other with them covered up. This decision was likely made to accommodate television screenings and maintain viewer comfort. In conclusion, Coma not only captivated audiences with its medical thriller plot, but also presented unique challenges and creative decisions behind the scenes. The dedication of the background artists, alterations from the source material, and considerations for different viewing platforms all contributed to the film's overall impact. In 1978, the movie Coma made its mark with a chilling image, a coma clinic where people hung suspended by wires through their wrists and ankles. This haunting visual was also featured on the film's posters. Actor Michael Douglas once likened the film to a blend of love story and the hospital mixing romance and hospital drama with the suspense typical of Alfred Hitchcock's works. Interestingly, director Michael Crichton, who helmed Coma, used the pseudonym Michael Douglas for some of his novels, a fusion of his first name and his brother's, Douglas. Crichton himself had a medical background, having attended medical school, while the author of the original novel, Robin Cook, was a doctor specializing in surgery and ophthalmology. Coma offered a unique mix of medical expertise, suspenseful storytelling, and a memorable visual that left a lasting impression on audiences. It was a film that blended the talents of its creators and remains a notable entry in cinematic history. In the 1978 movie Coma, several changes were made when adapting the film from its source novel. The central character, Dr. Susan Wheeler, differed significantly between the two. In the book, she was portrayed as a feminist blonde medical student, but in the film, she became a brunette second-year surgical resident. While the novel contained more feminist content, it was substantially reduced in the movie, except for some arguments between the main characters. Additionally, the location of the Medical Institute building was altered. In the book, it was situated in the city, while in the film, it was placed in an outer suburb. Another noteworthy fact about the movie Coma is that it marked the feature film debut of actor Ed Harris. 
These changes and Ed Harris' debut added interesting dimensions to the film, making it a notable entry in the world of cinema. And that's the scoop on some intriguing details about the 1978 movie Coma. It's fascinating how adaptations can shape a story, and it's always interesting to look back at the early work of renowned actors like Ed Harris. Stay tuned for more cinematic insights. As we bid adieu to the enigmatic world of the 1978 movie Coma, I invite you to journey back in time and embrace the mystique that unfolded on the silver screen. This cinematic gem, directed by the visionary Michael Crichton, beckons us to ponder the fragility of life and the depths of human curiosity. Have you ever found yourself questioning the boundaries between life and death? Coma delves into the eerie corridors of Boston Memorial Hospital, where medical mysteries shroud the truth. It's a tale of suspense, intrigue, and ethical dilemmas that still resonate with audiences today. Now, take a moment to reflect on your own connection with this remarkable piece of cinema. Did it ignite your fascination with medical dramas? Did it leave you with lingering questions about the ethics of medical research? Or perhaps it's the unforgettable performances of Genevieve Bujold and Michael Douglas that etched their way into your memory. We're not just wrapping up a movie, we're cherishing the memories, emotions, and conversations it has sparked. So, share your thoughts, your favorite moments, or the impact Coma had on your life. Let's keep the spirit of this cinematic masterpiece alive in our discussions. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic journey and for sharing your thoughts and memories. Your unique perspective adds depth to the tapestry of coma enthusiasts. Until we meet again in another captivating story, keep exploring the vast world of cinema. Warmly. <laughs>